that have joined me a little bit into the build, but uh, I'll show you what the scooter looks like here. So you can see it was pretty, pretty standard looking, just an old kind of granny mobile, like <laughs> it's pretty crap looking standard, don't they? But um, yes, so this is what it looks like after a bit of fettling. I've had this about, I don't know, about a week or two now, and I've started finally taking bits off of it. And I'm just trying to think up of a theme that I want to get it to, like, you know, like a, a Japanese drink or like a Kaido racer kind of livery. But, uh, so I've got a few ideas in the pipeline, so we'll see. For the moment, I'm just giving it a strip down, seeing what it's like underneath. It looks pretty good, it's 1985 Honda Vision 50cc. So in Japan, they call it Honda Tact. So I might get some Tact stickers and, you know, kind of make it look like the JDM version. But uh, I'll show you around it. It's uh, looking, not looking too good at the moment, just because it's in pieces. But yeah, this is a factory colour. It's kind of like a it's quite, quite like a pearly red actually. It's not a bad colour, it just looks a bit horrendous with the blue, like, grander plastics and the seat that came with it. So that's not very pretty. But, uh, yeah, the frame actually looks pretty good. There's only one spot that's got like a little bit of surface rust when I turn the bike upside down. But it's looking pretty good. Weird thing about these, like, You've got the damper in the shock and the way the wheel moves when you put the pressure on it, it kind of spins down. It's really weird. And when I first jumped on it and put the brake on and rolled it forward, it kind of squishes down into the floor with a little bit of forward motion. It's quite strange. But yeah, it's looking pretty tidy. Not quite sure what the mileage on this is overall, but at the moment it's on 2,938. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a picture of this dash cluster and I'm going to get a complete sticker made up to cover all of this with something funky. Maybe with a few dots just to say what kind of speed I'm doing roundabout, you know. Some kind of idea. And the Japanese ones, let me have by being written in Japanese at the top, which is always cool, you know, with a bit of Japanese on it. So, yeah, it's about where I'm up to. I'm done. I'm taking the exhaust off. Because local Tom has kindly given me his old exhaust that he's modified from a Honda, no, not a Honda, an Aprilia, I think. It's got a big extract expansion chamber. And it's definitely going to make more noise and look cooler than the standard one, which is absolutely tiny. Standard exhaust. It's <laughs> probably the smallest exhaust system ever. A little pea shooter. That's some better days. And uh, it's quite loud without the exhaust on, actually. Yeah, that instantly made me his ring. <laughs> Jesus, that is really loud, actually. Oh, love this one, two strokes. So, yeah. Keep removing bits as I go. It's always kind of nice to take something apart and then you know exactly how everything comes off and how everything goes back on. And I'm putting all the screws in the original places as I take them off, so try not to lose any screws because sometimes <laughs> I'm not too good with screws and they never go back where they came from. Always good to label stuff up. But now, DL2, L1. Of course, any Japanese bike would not be complete without some air horns. So I'm going to mount them on the opposite side of the exhaust on the back of the bike. Hopefully, I might be able to put this compressor somewhere, hide it away somewhere in the cowling. I'm not sure if it's going to go in the front. Oh, it could actually go in, in the glove box, which is behind this. Oh, it could mount in there perfectly. I'm not sure if the driller drill hole through from the relay to... It's even got a spade connectors on it, isn't it? Got our first two rusty bolts to go out. I'm going to have to drill out because it does not want to come out.
got an exhaust from Tom that was made to fit one of these. It's going to need some adjustment. It's quite cool. Some Kevlar end on it. The KTM expansion chamber. <laughs> Stripped it down a bit more. Most of the fairings off. Can't get the front of my guard off without taking the list off there. So, a bit mucky under here. A bit oily. Just needs a good old cleaner. Air filter cleaning instructions. It looks so. Like this is nothing to these things when you take them apart. No wonder they're so light. So simple. This needs a little bit of cleaning up. A bit of surface rust, but nothing, nothing too bad. Let's get some rust inhibitor now. Just have to a little wipe down, and that looks a lot better in there. Cheers, Dave! What? And, uh, yeah, clean under here now. Yes. So, when the guy sold me the scooter, he gave me a brand new Honda brake lever because the balls come off the end of this one. So, it doesn't look too hard to replace. Just a Phillips screw, possibly. That was quite easy, actually. You just pop the end of the cable out. Spin it around, put the new one in, put the screw back on. Piece of piss, right? It's not quite in situ yet, but I've got to kind of work out where I want it to sit. Could work quite well, though. Right, today. We've taken these terrible graphics off of the, uh, the bodywork because it's all going to be sanded down and decided to go white. So the whole car, the whole car, the whole moped is going to be white. So I can do any livery I want then, really, basically. Just make sure everything is late. So I'm going to use my. It's a plastic welder, but it's a bit. I'd use it as a heat gun. I'll just heat up the graphics and clean them off. So once you've given a little bit of heat, it does peel off quite easy. You've got to be quite patient with it. So, yeah, it's coming. Right, another day on the Honda Vision. So I'm going to make a extension for the headlight. Kind of like, you know, the shark nose on the Kaido races type thing. And so I've made like a mould for it to mould around. This is my first go of fiberglass, so I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or not, but I've had a few tips of friends, so we'll see how we go. I've covered it in tape, I'll chuck some wax on the top of it, and then give it a go. It's just taped up in place. Just something for the fiberglass to kind of mould round, to give it the shape of the headlights around. Right, so I bought this fiberglass repair kit from CFS Fiberglass, it was about 35 quid. So it comes with some matting. You've got two resins. It comes with some kind of little brushes and some pots. And just got some hardener. Plenty of sticks. I mean, these are all going to get messed up like the first time I do it. So we've got a few pots and gloves and it's got more brushes. Oh, I bought some, bought some more tape as well. It was handy, so it's got a little handbook on using the fiberglass. So I should give it a read and see how we go on. So I've cut out some matting, that's roughly going to be the right shape go around the nose. And I've waxed this up so the fiberglass shouldn't stick to this mold bit, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Been reading the instructions and 100 mil of resin, which is about that much. Needs 10, what was it? 
one gram of catalyst. Let's get it going. And so, 100 grams of resin needs one gram of catalyst to get it going. So we'll squirt that in. A little stir up, eh? Uh, I believe this stuff smells so good. Yum yum. So after two sheets of fiberglass and the resin, and it's not looking too bad actually, it's kind of what I had in my head. So I've um, got a few more sheets now. This stuff is hella messy. So I've got this floor protector up a building site to make sure the floor doesn't get absolutely covered in resin. But uh, yeah, it's actually kind of working, so fingers crossed, we're doing all right. Well, it's drying now, so I don't think it's gone too badly. So I'm going to put a bit of filler in, a bit of sand in, a bit of cutting, and it should be good. Also, while I'm here, I'm not going to use the passenger side, not passenger side, you know, uh, near side mirror. So, fiberglass that all up, ready to fill. And yeah, quick two minute mod. Just change the bar rubbers. They're like eight pound of eBay, so a lot nicer. And I'm gonna design a new sticker panel for this. Make that much more interesting. So I've got a Dremel and cut roughly the shape where I wanted the fiberglass to stop. I've got to sand it down a little bit more to get a bit more shape. But I'm gonna take out this blue mould and hopefully it should be left in the shape. It's not to do one handed. Well, at least the, the, actual, the wax works. The fogolite didn't stick to this tape. So prove that theory. Awesome. It's come out well. Pleased with that. Starting to take shape with a little bit of sand in. I'm just gonna, I've keyed up all the areas inside and I'm gonna lay some fiberglass inside just so it completely sticks to the original piece. Oh, we've got some filler here. So I'm just gonna mix that up. I'm just gonna make that to stop the drop between, you can see the drop between the original panel and the fiberglass just to, just to fix that. And smooth up all the fiberglass. Right, so after a bit of filler, just chucked a load on the top. Got some better lines now. A little bit of sanding, it should look, start looking pretty good. Also smoothed in the uh, left side mirror hole. I'll delete that. Let's move that out, you won't know that's there. Yeah, giving it a little sand with the orbital sander. Yeah, it's looking pretty, <laughs> actually, pretty good. I'm pretty chuffed with that. It's gonna look a lot better once it's painted. It's the uh, hole blocked and sanded. So yeah, more, obviously more sanding to go and then more some spotting filler over the top to uh, fill in all the little gaps in the filler. But yeah, it's actually come out quite smooth. Should do the job quite well. So the surround it's quite cool on actually. Yeah, just needs obviously more sanding. Finishing off. A little blank for the uh, other mirror. That's all on. Looks a bit naked at the moment, but uh, you really kind of realise how little there is <laughs> to these bikes when you take them to pieces. I mean, it's just a bit of tubing, a couple of brackets, and an engine and a seat. And uh, yeah, the wiring is just minimal, absolute minimal. But yeah, that's good. Simple is good. So it's coming along. Right, today. Uh, I want to change the colour of this seat because it is horrible. It's just like a dark blue, like granddad spec. And it's not very nice. So I did a bit of research and I'm going to try this stuff. It's called Played Leather Studio. And apparently you just paint it on and I'll have a red seat. So hopefully it's that simple. So we'll give it a go and we'll see the results. I mean, yeah. It's horrible. But the uh, theme for this bike is going to be Coca-Cola Light. So 
so that the plastics are going to go white and the bits, the textured bits that are here and the surround that goes around here is all going to be bright red and the rest of the bike is going to be white. I'm going to keep the wheels silver for now just to just keep it simple really. If you look bad I'll spray them white as well. But yeah that's about where we're up to at the moment so let's give this, give this stuff a go. Wow. Squirty on, see what happens. Nice, well it's fucked now, so let me turn it back. I did buy three bottles of this stuff. It does say it needs, it says one to two coats, but Jesus, this is definitely gonna need two coats. I guess where it's going, on quite a dark colour. It's definitely gonna need two coats. Do this one handed, so well, Honda, that's pretty easy to work with, just literally just slap it on. Could say it looks better already, but that's blatantly lying, it looks terrible. Well, it says let's wait an hour, but I'm super patient, so I've got a plastic welder and a radiator. And, well, that took about, I don't know, five, ten minutes with the uh, plastic welder. Not getting too hot, obviously, but it's dried it, and it dries like in a, with a matte finish. It's not bad, really, it's alright. I think once all the streaks are, all the streaks are gone, then uh, probably look quite good. Second coat, it's not looking too bad. Still see the brush strokes in it. But it does dry like a satin colour, so it doesn't look too terrible. It'd be worse if it was gloss. But yeah, looks alright. Definitely needs probably two more coats. So for an even top coat, I'm using a, a roller. Because the last one there was a few quite a few brush strokes you can still see so. A roller just eliminates that, really. So that should give a better finish. A couple of coats with this, and we should be golden. See, so quite a few coats now. I'd say that's just about done. So I'll prove that. That stuff works really well, actually. Uh, front cowl. I should put a bit more filler on top of it. Just to smooth out all the little bubbles and that. I'm filling in inside now as well. But yeah, that's coming on. So today I have I've not videoed much, but I've fitted my air horns to the, the rear side of the bike. I just used a little bracket to attach them to and attach it to the uh, I think that's the oil drain for the gearbox, but hopefully take the weight of the Three little plastic horns. And I'll run the compressor, mount the compressor somewhere in the bodywork, and then mount the, uh, the wiring for the horn there. I'll just run a cable down to the back to power them. So, yeah, easy peasy. They look pretty cool. Not pretty staggered. Coming together. So, these are the little four covers, which is pretty. Touched up with red paint. Get rid of that. So that, these are going to be white. These are going to be just with little red details all over the bike. With the seat and the grips and the air horns and that. So yeah, that's got to do. Just waiting for some aero to come from Japan. And yeah, it's getting there. Excited. So I said a while ago I was going to design some new clock. Clock face for the uh, dials, and as I'm going with the Coca Cola light thing, come up with this. So it kind of blanks off all the speedo, so you can't really tell how fast you're going, but 30 is pretty much in the middle. And then just like a faint outline for the uh, fuel, you can see where empty is. So, yeah, hopefully, it's easy as just chucking it on, just 
just take the uh, plastic cover off to reveal the clocks. And yeah, bought your uncle. Right, so I've got the plastics off the clocks. And with the needles, you just literally pop them off. This one just came off from your finger. And then cut the screws and the clocks come out. So you now just chuck the sticker on. So she's on. That looks pretty cool. Got my sizes right. Check it on. Well, there it is fitted. Really, really pleased with that. It's really cool. I got all the measurements right and everything the first go, so yeah, I'm pretty sure for that. That's pretty cool. Just about to see where the, the fuel gauge is. You just see about on the camera the, uh, the stripes in the background of it. But yeah, well chuffed for that. That's pretty cool.